sure if this is the first 356. I've never seen one, to be honest with you. And I, and I was out and about when I was young, and I never saw one. We we were um, we were friends who, who loved cars. We had, I had friends who, who were racing, who were, again, who were doing rally racings, and I never saw a 356. My name is Anthony Arroyo, and I am uh, Filipino. So as a boy, I love cars. I love toy cars, I love remote control cars. I, I, that was always what I asked for from my, from my parents. I always wanted cars, cars. And I was surrounded by my grandfather and his cars. The history on my grandfather uh, and his brothers, they all love cars. He studied college in Switzerland and uh, that's where the affinity for European cars came in. I remember this car when I was a little boy, my grandfather would come to our house, blow his horn, they would open the gate for him and I see his, his car driving in and I would be so like, wow, grandfather, you're here. Can you give me a ride, give me a ride? <laughs> and then he said, okay, later, later, let me talk first to your dad. So he talks to my dad and after an hour or so, okay, come on, let's go for a ride. <laughs> and that was very exciting for me. We would cruise down the, uh, the bay we call it the Ross Boulevard Bay, and he would tell me stories about this car. And I was so fascinated. Back then, this car was fast. It was quick. It was it was a sports car. And and, and as a boy, it was like it was like wow. I I, I really thought wow. One day I, I I hope to be able to drive this car. I never knew that I would get this because my dad's brothers they also wanted this car. So I was just very close to my grandfather that. He wanted me to have the car, uh, and he, uh, uh, that was, I think, 2005 when, when, when he said, I want you to have this. I took over it, I restored it, and, and that's the beginning of it. It was originally in the Philippines. At my uh, older age, the car was not running, nobody was taking care of the car, and I always wished that I could restore and make this car run again. On the restoration, I left it in the Philippines and I had car specialists fix the car. Um, I sent him about, I think 400 parts and it took about a year and two months. I, I wanted to restore everything. Everything is restored from under the engine, everything. 100%, I have all the photos that will show. It's documented that it was fully restored. I didn't, I didn't say just do this part or do this part, do everything, do the whole car. For the progress, I had someone look after it. I had a good friend who looked after it, but I, yes, I was always in the Philippines at that time. 2006, I was there probably two, three times a year. And I would go visit the car and I couldn't wait until it would finish step by step. I kept on rushing him, come on, let's go, let's go. And he kept on asking me, I need more parts, I need this, I need that. I never change the, the color, it's the same color. They are, they are matching numbers. Engine is this, everything is the same. Everything's original from color to interior. Everything is original. Eventually, it, it finished. It felt like I had a, a newborn baby, a, a beautiful newborn baby. Couldn't wait to drive it. This car is special because it belonged to our family, belonged to my grandfather, one. And to me, that's tells a lot, that's your her heritage. And two, this is a uh, hardtop. I don't see a lot of hardtop, uh, 356. I see a lot of soft tops, but not hardtop. They showcased it in, in a car show and a few actors and a few politicians wanted to buy the car. In fact, um, when it arrived here, Rasnak Pasadena called me and said there was a very famous singer. I, I don't want to say who it is. was looking for the, a car like this. And, and offered me a price for the car, but uh, it's not for sale, and it'll never be for sale. My grandfather always told me stories. I could sit down with him, we could tell stories all afternoon. He would, you know, he was the type of grandfather who, in the middle of the night, would call me up, Anthony, I'm gonna pick you up, or come here, let's go have a midnight snack, you know? And then we would watch the races together. We would watch, imagine being with your grandfather, watching drag races, midnight. You know, how cool is that, right? I mean, so to me, that was really cool. And when I became a teenager and I wouldn't visit him as much as I used to, 
I didn't realize that it really meant so much for him that I, I would be there. So he would tell my mom, hey, your, your son doesn't come and visit me anymore. So from then on, I always came and visited him a lot. They always knew me as a grandfather's boy. You know, my grandfather never scolded me. Anything I wanted, he, he was there. My, my, my father and my grandfather would sometimes argue. I'm trying to discipline him and you're here spoiling him. So whatever I can get with my dad, I got from my grandfather. I could wake him up at three in the morning. Grandfather, let's talk. I tell you nice stories and it's okay with him. I called my, my grandfather, grandfather, well, it's Lolo, okay? Lolo Mustache, because he had a, a mustache on. So I, I um, and it's 1963, it's the year I was born, so it's really, uh, perfect that I, I have the car. Plus the, the plates on this car, I dedicated to him. I put 63 mustache. That's the, the name of the plate. And um, I just feel very fortunate that I have the car. I, I will keep it with our family. And I hope to continue to drive and enjoy the car as much as I can.